One of these three men played a major part in one of the biggest news stories of the year. My name is John Schistler. What is your name, please? My name is John Schistler. What is your name, please? My name is John Schistler. Two of these people are imposters. Only one is the real John Schistler and is the only one sworn to tell the truth. Geritol, America's number one tonic. Geritol, the fast-acting, high-potency tonic that helps you feel stronger, fast, presents to tell the truth. And here is our host, Bud Collier. Thank you very much. Good evening. Welcome once again to To Tell the Truth. And now it's my privilege to introduce our panel. What is your name, please? <laughs> my name is Polly Bergen. My name is Tom Yule. My name is Kitty Carlisle. <laughs> and my name is High Gardner. May I speak for all of us on the show and the panel and telling you how happy we are that you're able to be with us tonight, Tom? Why, thank you, Bud. I'm very happy to be here. I think you'll have fun. At home, it always looks like you have so much fun. I wanted to come and find out whether you really do. Well, you'll find out, I think, for yourselves. Because as you heard, these three gentlemen up here all claim to be John Schisler, who were kidnapped by the Cuban rebels. And only one, of course, is the real John Schisler. The other two have merely assumed that identity, and they are the ones who do not have to stick to the truth. Panel in front of you, as is our custom, you'll find copies of an affidavit. Will you please follow along while I read it? I, John Schisler, am superintendent of construction for the Moa Bay Mining Company in Cuba. On the night of June 26th, I was kidnapped by the Cuban rebel forces led by Raul Castro. I was held captive in Castro's stronghold in the Sierra Cristal Mountains. On July 6th, I was released and flown back to the U.S. base at Guantanamo by Navy helicopter after 10 days in captivity. Signed, John Schisler. <laughs> all right, panel, as a start tonight, we have these three gentlemen all claiming to be John Schisler, who was kidnapped by Cuban rebels. Only the real John Schisler, as you know, is required to answer your questions truthfully. You will each question until you hear this signal. At the end of the questioning period, you'll be asked to register your vote for the one who, in your opinion, is the real John Schisler. And let's begin our questioning tonight with Kitty Carlisle. Kitty? Number one, where were you kidnapped? I was kidnapped in the province of Orienta. What were you doing what, when you were when just before you were kidnapped? Oh, just before. I was in my house. In your house. Number two, why were you kidnapped? <clears throat> Well, I was kidnapped because uh, it was a protest against the United States government. Number three, how were you transported to the mountain? By way of a jeep. Eight of us in total were taken by jeep by the rebels. How long did it take you to get where you were taken? Actually, two days were taken. It only took us to a place known as Orangia, or then to Calabas. Number one, what did they give you to eat when you were in captivity? Well, normal native food, chicken and rice, Cafe, con leche, that's all I think. Hi, Gardner. Uh, number one, you were, you were captured on, on uh, the 26th of June. What day was that? The 26th of June. Uh, what day of the week? Oh, I, I don't remember. Would you remember at number three? Thursday, Thursday evening at 8 o'clock. Uh -huh. Number two, how about you? It was Thursday afternoon. Uh -huh. uh, number uh, three, what is the name of the famous hotel located uh, in Veradera Beach? Never been to Veradera. I realize that's over on the northern shore. Most uh -huh. of our time. Number is on two, would you know? No. Number one. Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, number number uh, uh, three. One of the American sailors uh, captured by the rebels uh, had the same name as a famous American hero. Uh, do you know what his name was? There were no servicemen with us. It was not a serviceman. It was a name. Oh, I see. Polly. Number one. Um, it says that you were captured by the uh, the rebel forces led by. Raul uh, Castro. Raul has a brother. What is his name? Fidel Castro. Uh, number two, which is the real leader of the forces, Fidel or Raul? Uh, Fidel Castro is 
Uh, number three, one of the brothers has female assistant, uh, sort of a war assistant. What is her name? Very attractive. Known as Deborah. Her real name is Vilma. Her family name, I don't know. She's seen quite often with I see. Raul. Number two, uh, where is the University of Havana, at the top or the foot of the hill? I frankly Number don't three. know. Never been to Havana. Tom Yule. Number one, uh, what is written on the rebel uniform? The uh, movement symbol, uh, 26th of July. Number two, uh, how far are the doldrums from Cuba? I can't answer that question. Number three, could you answer that? I have ideas where it might be, but not near Cuba. Which way? Anyway, doldrums I've never heard of. I see. Number three, how do you say, uh, number one, how do you say it doesn't matter in Spanish? No importa. Number two, is Cuba east or west of the east coast of Florida? Uh, Cuba lies south of That's Florida. That's it, panel. Time is up. It's time to vote. And without consultation, will you please mark your ballots? And in so doing, select number one, number two, or number three. Remember that the team of challengers gets $250 for every incorrect vote. All set, panel? Polly, have you marked your ballot? No. <laughs> I didn't think you had. Well, defy me. I mean, if you're going to ask, no. I don't know which one it is. In between two. Oh, well, I know I'm, well. It's two or three. I voted for number three, mainly because number one didn't realize, to remember what day he was kidnapped on. Number three almost remembered too much. <laughs> but, so I think it's number two, but there you are. There I am, in the doldrums. Uh, Tom Yule. I voted for number three, too, because I think he looks like he just flew in by helicopter. <laughs> Kitty, what about your selection? I voted for number one. I liked his Spanish accent, and uh, he looks like a mining engineer. <laughs> And hi, Gardner. What about well, you? I voted for three uh, <laughs> for several reasons, similar to Polly <laughs> and to Tom. And, and I thought when they were standing up there that when you mentioned something about the kidnapping, he was the only one who remained slightly grim-faced. And I know it wasn't too much fun. <laughs> All right, there you have our vote and the reasons we voted the way we did. And we'll see how right or wrong we are as we discover right now which one of these three gentlemen was kidnapped by the Cuban rebels. Will the real John Schisler please stand up? <laughs> Don't hunches count for half. <laughs> Don't hunches count for half. No, only quick hunches. <laughs> uh, number one, did you tell us who you really are and what you do? My name is uh, Elliot Height, and I am vice president of the Gray Line Sightseeing Corporation of New York. Oh. <clears throat> and number three, what about you? My name is Jim Radigan, general manager for Castro. Castro Convertible, that is. <laughs> Didn't know the brothers had a, a manager, did you? All right, well, there we have our score in which the panel goofed all the way. So there were four incorrect votes of $250 each for a total of $1,000 in Geritol. Gentlemen, on your way out, you'll find an apothecary jar of Geritol waiting for each of you. Good night and the best of good luck. Thank you. Challenges, please. What? Is your name, please? My name is Sharon Lucas. What is your name, please? My name is Sharon Lucas. What is your name, please? My name is Sharon Lucas. All right, panel, will you follow along once more with your copies of this second affidavit? I, Sharon Lucas, am a motion picture stunt girl. Rather than risk the lives and limbs of movie stars, I am hired to perform in their place in hazardous scenes and dangerous action. I have been involved in explosions, cattle stampedes, barroom fights, and wagon and automobile wrecks. I have fallen off horses and down stairways, 
and was once thrown from a chariot with my hands tied behind me. I have doubled for many stars, including Jane Russell, Lauren Bacall, Anita Ekberg, Esther Williams, and Marilyn Monroe. Signed, Sharon Lucas. All right, panel, you heard these three young ladies all claim to be Sharon Lucas, Hollywood stunt girl, so let's start this cross-examination with High Gardner. Hi. Number one, what is the, the pay of a stunt girl? Well, we have a flat rate. It's $80 a day, plus uh, the stunts themselves we get paid extra. Does that class. include hospitalization, too? No, they won't cover us, unfortunately. Uh-huh. Number two, uh, in, in what movie were you thrown out of a chariot? Uh, in Jupiter's Darling. Uh, who was the star of that movie? Uh, Esther Williams. Uh, number one, uh, what, what uh, movie have you thrown out of a chariot? Jupiter's Darling. And you, number three? Jupiter's Darling. I guess you were thrown out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> number two, who is Big Boy Williams? I'm, I'm sure that he is a, a Hollywood uh, actor, but uh -huh. I'm not acquainted. Number one, would you know? Rings a bell, but not enough. Uh, number one, uh, would you say that Mac Miller is one of the top stunt men in Hollywood? Uh, possibly, but not to my knowledge. Uh -huh. Holly Bergen. Number one, there's a Western serial star who was at one time one of the top stunt men in California. What is his name? Oh, there are so many. I, I'm not familiar with him. Number two, could you name one? Then there are, <clears throat> pardon me, a couple of, of, of stars who have their own serials who were great stuntmen. Could you name one of them? Number I'm two. sorry, I couldn't. Number three, could you name one? Uh, Carrie Lofton. <laughs> does he star in a western series? Yeah. He does? I was Maybe. thinking of Jack O'Mahony, for your information, in case anybody ever asks you that again. Oh, Number sure. one. <laughs> Jack O'Mahony? Or the star of, also the star of Gunsmoke, too. Yeah. Jim, mm -hmm. oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Number one. Number one, there's a girl in Hollywood who doubles for me and happens also to have the same first name as mine. Could you tell me what her last name is? I think that's Polly Burson. It's very similar to your name. Burson? Yeah. Number... Tom? Number one, what was the toughest stunt you ever did? Oh, golly, that's hard, but I think um, in one picture called Tender Love, I had to fall down or be pushed down a spiral staircase that wasn't really so tender. <laughs> tender love. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, uh, do you get paid extra if you have lines to say in addition to the stunt you perform? Yes, yes, we do. Number three, could you tell me there is a street in Beverly Hills that has an oil well in the middle of it. What's the North name of it? Kitty? Number three, what was the toughest stunt you ever did? When I had to swim in 38 degree water. 38 degrees? Why didn't Esther Williams do that herself? It was, Esther Williams wasn't in the picture. <laughs> 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 Number one, can you tell me how people get hit in the face without getting hurt? Time You're to not vote. Gonna tell me. Without consultation, you have now to mark oh, your ballots, if you will, please, panel. And in so doing, select number one, number two, or number three. Polly, have you marked your ballot? I don't think any of them are really a sponsor. <laughs> Well, for whom are you voting, anyway, Polly? You. Me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, num I don't... Could you skip me and come back yes, to I'll me? Yes, I'll skip you, Tom. Thank you. Uh, well, I, I won't can... listen to what they're saying. <laughs> well, don't listen, because I tell you what, I've suddenly... I've got to be honest. I've suddenly recognized her. You have? Yes, yeah, so I want to uh, disqualify oh, myself, if oh, I may. Oh, okay, Tom, very well. Kitty? Who was it? Oh, well, I voted for no... <laughs> Jenny, for whom did you vote? I voted for number three. Um, on the basis that Esther Williams wasn't in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> and High Guard. Well, I didn't recognize anybody, so I voted for number two, although I think it must be number three because of Esther Williams. Uh, you only see stunt girls in long shots, and she could double for almost anybody. It looks uh, limb and lithe and, you know. Meanwhile, back at the ranch, Polly Bergen. <laughs> well... <laughs> 
You can tell I didn't listen to anybody because I voted for number one. <laughs> I thought it was a hunch number two because she's so tan, you know, and everything. But I voted for number one because she did know Polly Burson, who was one of the top female stunt women. But they probably, the other two probably knew her too. I didn't have time to check. Okay, check. there we go now. The way we voted may be akin to yours. Let's see if it is as we discover which one of these ladies is the real Hollywood stunt girl. So will the real Sharon Lucas please stand up? was it in the wrong way, oh, Tom. That's all I can say. <laughs> all right, now let's find out about the others involved. And number one, you should tell us who you really are and what you do, please. Yes. I'm uh, Skip Mitchell, formerly a kindergarten teacher from Birmingham, Michigan. And until mm. recently, I was a secretary at Columbia Records. <laughs> <laughs> uh, number three, what about you, please? I'm Barbara Fraser. I'm a photographer's model. I'm uh, not married, but I generally pose as a typical American housewife. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's up on the score. We counted uh, Tom's disqualification as a wrong vote, which it was anyway. <laughs> and that means that there were one, two, three incorrect votes at $250 each for a total of $750 from Geritol. Thank you very much, ladies. Good night. Stop on your way out, pick up your apothecary jar of Geritol, and good luck to you. What is your name, please? Hear ye, hear ye. My name is Robert Reveille. What is your name, please? Hear ye, hear ye. My name is Robert Reveille. What is your name, please? Hear ye, hear ye. My name is Robert Reveille. All right, panel, will you follow along with your copies of this next affidavit? <laughs> I, Robert Reveille, am the assistant director of craft shops for Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia. Colonial Williamsburg is a faithful restoration of the town as it stood from 1700 to 1780. In addition to my administrative duties, I am the special town crier and night watch. In this capacity, I walk the streets reading announcements and proclamations in the traditional manner and costume of colonial days. Signed, Robert Reveille. So we have three gentlemen this time all claiming to be Robert Reveille, town crier of Colonial Williamsburg, and we start this round with Polly Bergen. Polly? Thank you, bud. Number one, what year was Arnold Stewart the mayor of Williamsburg? 1740. Uh, number uh, two, could you tell me what year Arnold Stewart was the mayor? 1725. Number three, um, who is the governor of Virginia? Allman. I beg your pardon? Allman. Um, what is a famous college number two in Virginia, Williamsburg? William and Mary College. Number one, um, what, what kind of craft shops do you assistant direct? 18th century craft and handy cra uh, trade. Crafts and trade? Crafts and trade in the 18th century, that's right. Um, number two, what is the population of Williamsburg? Oh, about 7,000, ma'am. Tom? Number one, are the craft shops open on Sunday? Yes, they are. Uh, number two, what is the name of that island off the coast of Virginia that has wild horses on it? Chitty Tick, sir. Number three, what is the name of the island off the coast of Virginia that has wild horses on it that also has uh, oysters? I don't know. <laughs> Man, those horses dine well. <laughs> number three, what is the... Uh, number one, what is the color that is named after Williamsburg? Blue. Kitty? Number one, where do you live in Williamsburg? 
in Williamsburg, mm -hmm. at the Nicholson, Nicholson Kitchen. Number two, where do you live in Williamsburg? Blair, Archibald Blair Stableman. Number three, where do you live in Williamsburg? I live at the John Crump Kitchen. <laughs> What's that thing you're wearing around your neck called? The stock. Number two, is your hat called a tricorn? Three-cornered hat, ma'am. Three-cornered hat? Yes, ma'am. Not a tricorn. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Gardner. Uh, number, number one, where in, in Williamsburg is the Betsy Ross house located? <laughs> On the south side of the Duke of Gloucester Street. Uh, number two, do you know? Didn't there, sir. Uh, number three. Uh, number two, who was it uh, who financed the restoration of William Sutton? That is so funny. <laughs> who was it who financed the restoration of uh, Williamsburg? Number two, sir. Oh, John Rockefeller Jr. Sir. Uh, number three. That's all the time we have. <laughs> Will you please try to vote your way out of this confusion? And in so doing, select number one, number two, or number three. And Polly is jumping like a beanbag here. So, Polly, you've marked ahead of the time this time. For whom did you vote? I'm right this time. You are, huh? I voted for number three because I asked number one and number two what year Arnold Stewart was the mayor, and they gave me a year, and I made him up. <laughs> The only thing that puzzles me is that you didn't ask number three. Well, uh, Tom Yule. Oh, no. <laughs> I voted for number two because he sort of rings the bell with me. <laughs> okay, Kitty. I voted for number one. He was the only one that kept a straight face. <laughs> <laughs> and High Gardner. Well, I voted for number two because Betsy Ross had nothing to do with Williams. <laughs> All right, there you have our rhymes and reasons. Let's discover now, for our own satisfaction as well as yours, because we hope you're playing along with us, which one of these gentlemen is the town crier of Colonial Williamsburg? Will the real Robert Reveille please stand up? Good girl, Polly. Thank you very much, sir. Number one, would you tell us who you are? Uh, my name is Benjamin Franklin. I'm an NBC television cameraman. <laughs> uh, Polly, what? he was the number one cameraman on your show. <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, he was. <laughs> he I think, has red hair under that. Well, he wore his hair differently then. Yes, oh. that's quite true. <laughs> number, uh, let's see, number two, would you tell us who you are, please? My name is George Washington. And what do you do, sir? I'm the sales manager of the Germantown Fireproof Storage. Uh, it's an allied van land agent in Philadelphia. <laughs> Mr. Washington is uh, helping to establish the George Washington Museum at the new 12-acre uh, residential development in Washington Square Village, soon to be opened in New York. Well, gentlemen, in checking down, Polly was the only one right, which meant that there were three wrong at $250 each for a total of $750 from Geritol. Hope you enjoyed your visit. We enjoyed having you here. Stop on the way out and pick up your apothecary jar of Geritol. Good night and good luck to you. moment we'll join the panel again but meanwhile this message detect a certain amount of indecision in the audience i think due to laughter and applause they didn't hear that the uh, gentleman who worked for castro in our first panel there works for castro convertible not the rebels i just thought i'd put that <laughs> record clear here that's all the time we have for tonight except we must take a moment to thank you tom so much for being with us didn't you have a good time i sure did <laughs> <laughs> Well, come back soon, will you? You'll never uh, that time. <laughs> Next week, our guests on the panel will be Keenan Wynn. And with that bit of announcement, good night, panel. Good night, good night. Bud. And now this is Bud Collier saying good night from Jarrett Hall and reminding you to tell the truth. Good night, everybody. <laughs> to tell the truth 
is the Mark Goodson Bill Cotton production in association with the CBS Television Network. Miss Perkins Gown by Wilma.